My name is Michael. And I'm Nami. And together we're Mike and Nami Plus. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> but this is an interesting video topic. The issues we faced due to premarital sex. Before we get into this, Jordan Peterson in his recent bestseller, 12 Rules for Life, people organize their brains with conversation. Mm -hmm. If they don't have anyone to tell their story to, they lose their minds. Like hoarders, they cannot unclutter themselves. The input of the community is required for the integrity of the individual psyche. To put it another way, it takes a village to organize a mind. And so really the purpose of this discussion is to organize our minds, discover and go through kind of uncharted territory mm -hmm. to realize and put our thoughts and our consequences and, and our through experiences. Through the funnel of our experiences. And through words. Mm -hmm. So that we can kind of surf it as sit into light. Mm -hmm. And understand it more and understand it more. I think the main more. purpose for you, the viewer, is that you could perhaps maybe gain an understanding through our experience and our consequences and our mistakes and also the goods. The or picture. even share your opinions and thoughts if they do differ or if they do resonate. Dating, you know, for us is, a, is, a, is an evaluation towards if we can run the same direction. In life. In together. life. It's a time of assessment. It's a purpose. is towards a commitment. Biblically, mm -hmm. it clearly states that, you know, don't have sexual relations outside of a marriage context. And why might that be? It's because sex is actually a very good thing. It's a very highly honorable thing. It's a sacred thing. Mm -hmm. And, and it's intimate. It's also like unions on multiple levels. Mm -hmm. Physically, obviously, you're unified. Emotionally, there are huge effects and ties to your emotion when you do right. engage in such intimacy. You know, there are these different layers of life. There are these different structures and areas that are important in our life. For example, our physical health, our mm -hmm. spiritual health, our mental health. When we engage in such intimacy on a physical level we're unified physically we're unified spiritually right. but socially in the public eye we're not unified we're not a married unit emotionally maybe we're not at the same ideology of of commitment or desire to hold responsible to each other or mentally you know i don't even not think sure. we were at that capacity to yes. think through the consequences and yes. and the need to address that health side. Culturally, and, we're not. Yeah. I mean, financially, we're not. So in all these aspects, if there is dissonance with the different right. layers, then there is conflict, not just this way, but within the layers itself and yes. within the different structures. Yes. In your relationship, you feel unified because, you know, you've given the most vulnerable part of yourself to your boyfriend or girlfriend. But then socially people view you and they just think like, oh yeah, they're just dating and they're just, you know, having mm -hmm. this light romantic relationship. Things will pass and they'll pass because that's how life is. And, you know, they're just young kids. But then in your heart, you feel so committed and you feel so like unified. And then there's that conflict there in these different realms. Mm -hmm. That's where a lot of the difficulty and struggle comes is when there's a lot of dissonance. There's that conflict in, and struggle. In the different the friction, areas. Yeah. yeah. Because it's not unifying. Mm -hmm. Then they're all very important to us. Mm -hmm. And like how you can make that out is just not making sense. Yeah. It's just conflict, yeah. conflict, conflict. Yeah. Friction, friction, friction. Arguments, and then arguments, like you're arguments. confused because like mm -hmm. you feel a certain way, but then the way people are viewing you and the way you're speaking to each other right. is just like you nothing's like, matching. You feel like you've given so much into this relationship. There's high expectations mm. for what you've given, but it's not going anywhere the way you mm. expect it to and the way you want it to. Mm. People often think that and they believe that intimacy to that extent is just physical. It's just pleasure. Right. You do whatever you want with your body. And as long as you're not hurting anyone, mm. then that's fine. Yeah. But what we believe in a biblical context is that it is hurting you. It's mm. hurting you it, because you're binding yourself in all of these different aspects, but not in a mm. marital context mm -hmm. with someone you know and you trust mm -hmm. and you commit each other to to know that you will love and serve each other to glorify God together. 
yes. not for yourselves, but there's much fruit in that. And there is a channel and a video that I really liked watching of this lady who was explaining her views on saving herself for marriage in terms of her virginity. And it was so like encouraging, but also it was so informative. It was just a lot of sound reasoning and I'll have a link to it in the description and also in the cards if you want to watch it after this video just to hear like different opinion or her you know reasonings for mm -hmm. why she decided to save herself for marriage and right. what benefits she had reaped from that. So we've been married for six years. In hindsight what were some of the consequences? Um, I think a lot of fighting. That was one really big one that I noticed right away. I feel like the intimacy raised my emotional expectations for right. you to understand me more, to care about me more, right. try harder in making sure I'm not upset or when I am mm -hmm. upset to try harder to resolve our conflict. More selfish kind of expectations that cause more conflict. Like I took this book for young men only and there's a section in this book which specifically talks about that intimacy. If you do engage in sexual relations, then she or the female counterpart will become very clingy. Mm. Because in a sense, you're giving the most vulnerable part about yourself yeah. to the person to trust. It takes a lot of vulnerability to get naked in front of each other in a sense, <laughs> right? I mean, for some, it might take in a lot In multiple of, levels, not just physically. Yes. Like for some, it takes a lot of vulnerability to become financially naked mm. or physically naked. Mm. Or, or even like bad habits naked. Like yes. just being able to expose that with each other and mm. expose your your imperfectness. Yes. Yes. Mm. And that happens obviously to your body because we feel, we feel like there's a lot of flaws in our own mm. bodies themselves. And I think right? everyone, yeah. Feels that way. Mm. Not necessarily generalizing, but for females, there's more, I guess, kind of body consciousness. Mm -hmm. And so to and give that part yeah. up, uh, there's a lot more expectation, like you said, and a lot mm -hmm. more clinginess. For men, the big issue is men lose, not interest, but they want to, they don't want to be responsible. They don't mm. like responsibility. They don't like to be tied to commitment. Mm, mm, mm. They want that freedom and they don't want that cleanness. They don't really want that to be there emotionally mm -hmm. to, to serve and provide for and be understanding emotionally. Mm. I noticed that too. After we did engage engage or fall into a sexual relation, there was conflict, there was tension mm. all the time. And that was huge. I mean, it wasn't light and it was something that was a struggle. I mean, I feel like we, we did kind of have conflict throughout our relationship but especially after we became so intimate with each other two years into our dating relationship yeah. to make it clear and to repeat myself because we did mention this before like i was of age of majority in canada which was 16 but for us i felt like there was a huge jump in our conflicts mm -hmm. and just the intensity of our conflicts right compared to like in general how our disagreements would be Right. Other consequences, I think, are the inability to hold your self and your head up high in front of other people, too, because mm -hmm. you have this kind of like secret or like this not guiltiness, but like guiltiness. Yes. Guiltiness <laughs> and like, or two facedness or. Yeah. Like something mm -hmm. that you don't want people to know about, especially in a faith community. This is something that you're involved with. There's that feeling that you you don't really want to engage in those relationships with that community as much or you can't fully engage openly right so like a sin in one area of life kind of ensnares you entangles you and taints all other areas of life like it mm -hmm. it kind of suffocates you slowly yeah, if it's yeah. unaddressed or if it's growing mm -hmm. during the dating process you're kind of realizing do we fit in areas where we can pursue a lifelong commitment mm -hmm. if you were to imagine we're kind of building a fortress together yeah. Right. And it has to be together because we're in this journey together. Mm -hmm. so let's say one area is finances. Are we on the same line financially in terms of our values? Mm -hmm. Another area like child rearing, parenting, mm -hmm. family values or work values, time spent together, marriage communication. Like these mm -hmm. many key areas have to be built up. Mm -hmm. But if you just go jump into sexual relationships without having the ample time and consideration or quality or discussion or conversation to 
actually understand and build these up. So what sex does is that it builds walls to safeguard and protect these structures that you're building. Like so sex before marriage, it builds with the purpose of safeguarding these fortresses that you're building. But if you just jump into the sexual relationship, then you're building walls of no kind of structure. Mm. no foundation or beams to hold the walls up and so it kind of crumbles it's just a weak foundation or weak structural there's weak structural integrity mm -hmm. but then when you have that through a dating relationship and it doesn't mean like 10 years of dating I mean some people date for less than a year and they're or like three months or three months and mm -hmm. they're able to kind of realize that like there's no really a time on that mm -hmm. necessarily but what that dating process does is that it kind of gauges and assesses okay can you run through the course of life together forever your commitment mm. can i jump into that prematurely you've built something or invested in something too quickly and realize that oh it's gonna crumble from here i think a good way to think about it is when i was in university mm -hmm. our faith community and our families too i mean my parents we did want to disclose to them you know this is something that we're struggling with so that they know right off the bat right and that was something i think that was good but at the same time i don't think my parents were very equipped to mentor us in that way or establish practical steps to help us through our relationship especially because like i never even had a relationship with my mom to begin with since we never spent time together like ever the only time we spent together was when we were sleeping that's like basically nothing that's not even time together i don't think she understood as well like how to engage me in a relationship with her mm -hmm. because she never had proper relationships with her parents either because of like the war in Korea, just the family situation that she grew up in as well. I think a big consequence for males is that after kind of sexual union outside of marriage, in a sense, selfishly it's like okay what more is there then mm. and then you begin to look elsewhere maybe mm. at the same time you just want to disconnect you just want to go in for it quickly and go like oh no more okay see ya that becomes what you primarily want so you give the love for that just the sexual fulfillment, or fulfillment. Yeah. then again it's it's an issue because you just commodify the relationship mm -hmm. but as you perpetuate that if that's the only purpose of which you're engaging in the relationship generally what people go into things for you exit for so if you're going in for sex you'll exit for sex mm -hmm. it's a very purposeless kind of direction mm -hmm. purpose to it. what have you done you just gone in you wasted your time and you came out and you hurt someone else you made and it worse for yourself. everyone mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. i heard one of my male friends say mm -hmm. is like something that's really hard for them losing their virginity outside of a marriage context at the time when they're single like they already broke up because they tasted the intimacy and specialness and i think just like the physical pleasure too of intimacy to the utmost level physically they express that you start to crave that more and more because you tasted it it brings more temptations opens more cans of worms and thoughts and behaviors i guess that makes sense because you begin to become dull or used to mm -hmm. what stimulates you and you want always want more mm -hmm. You're looking for more. what's the next and you, it's kind of like drugs in a way too where you have to keep hitting a bit higher yeah to get that same level of fill. ecstasy mm. pleasure in the moment is great but you become very weary of it over time and you begin to question purpose mm. it becomes very very dry and very meaningless yeah and very painful all people are new people pursuing the same old things in which to them it's new things mm. i mean it's kind of history repeating itself and mm. a huge part of that is sexual fulfillment there really is nothing new in regard to this mm. that we don't know but it's just people are experiencing it and learning themselves yes. Yes. can we talk about the fruits of a marital intimacy one thing that the lady did say in the video that i mentioned before of why she chose to abstain until marriage was there's no fear anxiety or worry within your marriage because you've already committed lines are already established you're not worried is this person gonna leave me like am i just giving myself for nothing i think there's a lot of things for me i think having the intimacy of a marriage partner over the years i mean everything's a learning 
experience and、mm-hmm. it's struggled through、mm-hmm. the learning, but we're drawing closer every year. It's quite amazing. Just sex in marriage itself. I mean, it's difficult, it's complicating,、mm-hmm. and it's a learning process every year. But、mm-hmm. that experience grows and gets better every year. And I think. Your ability to understand each other and to work through struggles or difficulties、mm-hmm. is established. Just that,、yes. that routine of working through、yes. struggles is established. And communication for, in the bedroom. Even outside of the bedroom. Yes, inside and outside the、yeah. bedroom. <laughs> What's so funny? <laughs> I don't think we would be talking about this. Yeah.、Um, But I mean, people might go off the thrill of one night stands, it's a new experience, it's a、mm. mystery of the person. <gasps> There's a book I heard about on CBC Radio. It was called Erotic Stories for Punjabi Widows. Oh, I heard of that title. There was a podcast on it、mm-hmm. because they were talking about how a lot of fiction and a lot of fantasies revolve around. Like thrill filled stories of high romance, almost like forbidden loves, yeah, like new discovery, new discovery, pursuing the mysterious. Or, yeah, these stories are based on strong marital relationships、yes. that involve commitment. And it's interesting because it's like that's what's erotic to wives is that commitment, right? Especially for wives who have husbands that have passed. Like, it's something that they long for because it's something that they have lost and that they're grieving. I would argue that even though I haven't experienced that one night stand kind of life, I really enjoy <laughs> this life. <laughs> yeah, for me too. I think we've only ever been with each other. Yeah, so if you view it as precious and if you value it and you treat it that way,、mm. then it will be to you. I don't think I ever regret. Not experiencing right sleeping with multiple people, yeah. But then again, that is to say, our relationship is not perfect, yeah. Like, we've had our moments of emotional infidelity、mm. or emotional cheating, or even not necessarily physically but visual, whether it be through like pornography or some other visual stimuli,、mm. whatever it may or be, or like, yeah, emotionally when you're like so invested in this、and、fantasy then, fake. And I mean, I would even say secret masturbation. Would also be crossing the line of, in a、commitment、sense, infidelity, and,、yeah. breaking, breaking commitment or breaking、mm-hmm. infidelity, in which、uh, we're both guilty of. Even our relationship, our marriage is not perfect, but that's also why it's so vitally important that we center Christ、mm. before us in our relationship as our direction, as、mm-hmm. our purpose, as everything in our lives, because sexual union between the husband and wife is an expression of the union of what. The, the church, each of us, the entire church in the body awaits for in marriage because it's a representation of our gospel unity and marriage with Jesus Christ. I think a lot of people say, like, do what's good for you, do what makes you happy. But if you put yourself as the guiding ruler or like the guiding compass, there really is no direction, it's、On、just anarchy. Right. I feel it.、Like. You make it up on the way. And I think for some people that's fine. But in our, in what we believe in, yes. In how real God has been in our lives, for us, that would be selfish in our disobedience to what God would want. Was this weird? <laughs> like, I felt like our intimacy was something that I would never talk publicly about. I'm very selective with who I speak about this. With, especially because I don't like to have sexual conversations with unmarried people because that's not something that、right. I would encourage talking about like sexual experiences outside、right. of a marriage context. Right. So I'm only comfortable normally speaking about this with like my close. Married on these and friends, and I never expected for us to talk about it、mm-hmm. like, even just vaguely, the way that we did. But I think it's also like good to share our thoughts and our yes, experiences. And, and again, it's tricky and because our evaluations. I mean, sex is such a huge topic and it's an intimate topic.、Mm-hmm. In a sense, anything can be intimate. To even casually say, How is your spiritual life going?、Mm. Some people see that that question is a Violation as if you ask、mm-hmm. uh, some acquaintance of yours, hey, how's your marriage sex life going? 
it's like to that level of kind of offensiveness or mm -hmm. intrusiveness. Right, right. People can say that of many things. How's your financial health? Mm -hmm. How's like, your how emotional you stability? Yeah. <laughs> so it really has to depend on the context, the audience, right. mm. the approach, the language. Mm -hmm. We have to be tactful, right? And, and mindful. All things and too. of course, we're going to offend a few viewers. Mm -hmm. Especially yeah. if they don't watch the whole thing and they don't understand everything then right obviously they would be offended and so we understand that and we take that risk but at the same time we believe that there are fruits fruits that are planted and seeds that are planted mm. or pebbles that are kind of thrown into your shoes as as you walk you can think about it and kind of disturbs. even just question so what did you think <laughs> Was it weird? <laughs> I feel like it was kind of weird, but it was interesting. I think it's good for us to talk about. Yes. <laughs> we'll see you next time. Bye.